lot of announcements that have come in, which is, uh, for instance, if I just refer to my notes, it says that there are tax implications of selling a house have changed. How you set off rental income from a second house, uh, that I think will upset quite a lot of people who bought a second house for investments. Uh, what really is the government trying to do here? So there are incentives for uh, for actually selling uh, for investment in, uh, in immovable property. Is the government actually trying to encourage people to buy a property? If it is, then why is it that uh, the set off of rental income from a second house is now being uh, curtailed? Yeah, so if we look at the provisions, what uh, especially focusing on the set off portion, uh, before you know the existing provisions are that whatever actual loss you incur from a, a rental uh, of house property, the actual loss is allowed to be set off against your other income. Other income, yes. And more specifically for salaried category, uh, today if I'm a, if you know all salaried uh, individuals, the only other income that is allowed to be set off against the salary income is loss from house property. Right. Right. So uh, therefore that, and there was no limit on that. So a lot of, you know, that used to provide a lot of tax relief to that particular section. Right. Uh, but in this, uh, uh, and, and, and we also, need, it's important to refer to the other provision, which was that if you only had one house property and that you were staying in that property, right? then the interest deduction on that self-occupied property is anyways limited to two, two lakh rupees. Right. So I think somewhere this step has been done to kind of bring both the, both the provisions at par. So whether you are setting off loss again of house property against your income, or whether you are just claiming interest deduction or your self-occupied property, the amount will be same. Now, whether this promotes or discourages additional investment into housing sector, uh, you know, it's a difficult question to answer now. But I think maybe in the short term, uh, you know, the rental yields are not uh, equal to or the the, the, the interest, cost of the, the loan. cost of the loan, right? right? So it's always lower than the cost of the yes. loan. So invariably, you'll always have a loss. And if I'm restricted to a two lakh rupees per annum, then really, uh, you know, my, I will always be not able to utilize because carry forward, I can keep on carrying forward. There's a life of carry forward as well. And then uh, it's very unlikely that I'll be able to set off that loss in the future years. But at the same time, if you look at some other interesting provisions on the immovable property, the long term capital gain period, which used to be 36 months, has been reduced to 24 months. So which means that if I sell a house uh, after owning it for 24 months, it'll fall into the long-term capital gain category. Why it's important? Because as we all know, the long-term capital gain category gets a lower tax rate as compared to a short-term capital gain. Right. Number two, uh, there's a section, section 54 EC, uh, which says that if you have a long-term capital gain, and if you invest that gain amount in specified bonds, uh, you don't have to pay any taxes. Right. right? Now, simultaneously in this budget, the government has said that the range of those bonds will also be expanded so which means that more options will more be options will be given right. for you to reinvest your amount of gains from capital uh, long term capital gain so that you don't pay any taxes now two things have happened simultaneously okay. so i think to your point whether it is an encouragement to buy houses or sell houses i think you know we'll have to just see the spending habits of people but but uh, yeah i mean uh, maybe maybe it may in the short term any which way is real estate sector is kind of uh, going through a, a, a stress period, especially after demonetization. I think this may further probably slow down spending in that area. So Ravi, there is also a provision about giving infrastructure status to affordable housing. Is that meant for rich builders or does it have a fallout on common people like us? See, uh, if I go by the term affordable housing, so I am assuming it's yeah. not meant for rich people. But uh, yeah, I think you know, giving infrastructure status to affordable housing probably could imply that there may be some concessional uh, uh, interest uh, uh, rates for the builder and for the buyer as well. Uh, what has also happened in this budget is that if you look at, there is a section uh, under the law which gives a tax uh, holiday uh, to builders who are who are building uh, affordable houses. Right. Uh, the there have been some relaxation in terms of definition of affordable housing. So in the municipal cities like Delhi, Kolkata, mm -hmm. uh, earlier the the limit was of. 30 square meter of built up area. Now it's carpeted. Now it's carpeted area. So it gives a little bit more freedom in terms right. of more uh, bigger size. Mm -hmm. So so therefore there has been uh, you know that kind of uh, extra bend or edge or I would say a little push uh, given to promote more affordable housing. And if this infrastructure status also comes along, probably it could be a good combination and could could kind of at least help that common man to buy more houses.